This is the most expensive shoe that we will probably ever review on the channel, at least I hope so. It's the Leaning Fadian 3 Ultra. Let's check if it's any good. Hey everyone and welcome back on the channel. My name is Alex and in today's video we are reviewing the most expensive shoe that we've ever reviewed here on this channel. Is the Leaning Fadian 3 Ultra. Uh, it's a marathon racing shoe, a racing shoe from Chinese company Li Ning. It's a company that is slowly, slowly growing and running, arriving in Europe, arriving to the US. One of their athletes got the bronze medal at the Berlin Marathon in 2022. So it's a serious company, you know, doing serious shoes and well, actually one of the biggest sport manufacturers in China. Uh, so I think it's great to consider them. Thanks to them for sending this shoe to us for the review and let's go directly into it. Weight, we're looking at 245 grams in my size US 11 EU 45. Not the lightest super shoe, you know, some of them are heavier, Nike, Alphafly, Nature, and even V1, V2 are heavier, Adios Pro is heavier, Hoka, uh, Rocket X2 is heavier, so this remains like quite competitive, not as competitive as Vaporfly or say, you know, Puma Deviates Elite um, 2. Stack height in the heel, I haven't been able to confirm, but I think we're looking at 40 millimeters, maxing out the World Athletics uh, regulation, five millimeters drop for that supposedly 35 millimeters in the forefoot. Interesting five millimeters choice, um, which I think combined with the rocker makes very, very interesting geometry um, for its shoe. And it, you know, I can already spoil the review, it works quite well. So I think five millimeters with that rocker was a, was a smart choice from um, leaning. Per, we're looking at a very, very thin, um, let's call it a um, yeah, engineered mesh type of upper, pretty much everywhere except on the um, eyelid chain, which is reinforced with some um, TPU, I would say. And that tongue, stretchy tongue, which I really, really hate, or at least do not really like, it's just too thin, creating some lacing pressure. And the upper would have been good with the traditional tongue and that engineered mesh here. Uh, but here the, the, the upper really, really is the issue for me. And it kills a bit the fit, which is not bad, but it's just a small detail that, that doesn't um, click in with the rest of the upper. So a bit sad with the upper because if the upper was much better, or at least just a bit better, the shoe would also be um, a bit more interesting in my opinion. You have some interesting overlays on the lateral and medial side, providing with a bit more structure to the upper. You can see them right here and right here. This is by the way, a uh, colorway in collaboration with a fashion brand called Sauland, Suland, I'm not sure how you pronounce it. I believe they're from Denmark, but don't quote me on that and please, you know, correct me in the comments if need be. So quite interesting colorway, a bit fashion trendy type of colorway. I wasn't super excited about it when I first got it, but it kind of grew on me and now I, I kind of appreciate it. Um, especially, you know, working with some white shoes, it, it does the job quite well. Mitso, and this is where things are very, very interesting. Like I said, 40 millimeters in the heel, five millimeters drop. You have that funny little feature here in the forefoot and sort of eye that compresses a bit and gives that trampoline effect. I would be actually very curious to have that in the full uh, width of the shoe. This is only on the two sides, lateral, medial or medial lateral, uh, but it doesn't go through the shoe. It would be interesting in my opinion to have such a feature going through the shoe to really have a full trampoline effect in your forefoot when you, when you push here and you have that trampoline um, effect. I think you have it, but not as much as you would if it was um, really coming through the shoe. I'm not sure they can do it though, because I know some other brands, um, Swiss brands have patents on uh, holes going through the shoe. So interesting also from a legal perspective here, but definitely a good feature. I think one that, that actually is, is working, um, creating that trampoline effect here in the forefoot. And I didn't say it, um, I thought it was obvious, but it's not obvious at all. The foam here is Piba. It's called the Boom Compound Leaning Boom. It's a Piba compound, uh, the pellets type of PBA, so the one you would find in uh, Saucony Power Run PB, for instance. Usually, I think it performs a bit worse than um, like full material PBA, if that makes sense. The other PBA, not the pellet one, but the you know the the Vaporfly PBA, if that makes sense, or that exists also on many other shoes now. But surprisingly, it works very well. It's not as soft as I would expect. It's probably around that 47, 50 C drew meter score, but it's a soft ride. It's a very nice compression in the heel. 
a very, very, very solid uh, transition to forefoot. And that early rocker that you can see here provides you with a very nice propulsion phase. And I would call this shoe a competitor to the Alpha Fly, something that is soft, but not too soft, very responsive, very energetic. Um, and also with that lower drop, it reminds me a bit more of the Alpha Fly than uh, of the Vapor Fly, comparing it to the Nike shoes, sorry to the other brands, but uh, making it easier for you uh, out there on YouTube to understand a bit how it works. A bit more like the Alpha Fly, but with a earlier rocker um, and probably a more aggressive rocker, if that makes sense. Quite a solid ride. And I must say that I really enjoyed the ride. I took the shoe for different uh, workouts, different type of paces, and it delivered a solid experience. So um, I would put it probably in tier two or even in tier one of super shoes, which says, I think quite a lot about it. I would need to compare it to measure the data like we do in the ultimate carbon shoe videos to see a bit if it's that good when it comes to the numbers or if it's just a subjective feeling, but the subjective feeling is definitely, definitely very good. Outsole, I cannot really speak to the wear because I haven't really used it for more than uh, 30 kilometers, for now at least. It looks like, you know, the coverage have, has been thought uh, thoroughly. Probably a bit more here in the heel would be uh, better. The Piba is exposed throughout the midsole, but I don't see any wear for now on the, um, on the shoe. So it should, you know, go three, 400 kilometers like many super shoes do nowadays. The issue with the shoe, and uh, I mentioned it in the intro, is the price points. For now, if you wanna buy it, it's $499, which I certainly, no matter how great the shoe is, would not spend on it. This is a shoe that probably, you know, is worth um, 280, 300 dollars, uh, 300 euros, max, 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 but not more and no shoe should be more than $300 uh, today in 2023, even with the inflation and stuff. 500 is completely nuts. I get it, it's a collab with a fashion brand, and it's also probably because it's some early release pairs that you can only find coming from China with the um, taxes, tariffs, and, and so on. But even if it's 330, 350 down the road in the EU, it would be a bit too much for this shoe. If you're really into something different and if you want to figure um, a different type of shoe, you could look into it, uh, but I would only consider it below 300 euros and with a better upper. Um, I would, however, maybe race in it. And I know this is a bit paradoxical, but um, but it's, it's definitely a very solid ride. I would put it up there with like Hoka Rocket X2, Alpha Fly V2, Vaporfly V2, not V3, and maybe Adios Pro 3, uh, Metaspeed Edge um, for me. So that's, you know, the top tier of shoes, and I think it belongs up there. Maybe, you know, tier one minus or tier two plus, um, if that makes sense. Carbon shoe video um, with the Puma Deviate Nitro Elite 2, Hockey Rocket X2, Sakani and Dolphin Elite, and more. Enjoy your run today, enjoy your ride, and go beyond your limits. I'll see you in the next one.